And welcome back. It's Jeff Wells with Beyond the Rings Short Stories. I appreciate you being with me again today as I share from over 20 years, 10 different Olympic ministry outreaches about how God is at work during the Olympic Games. In this episode, I want to talk to you about pen trading. Um, I realize as I talk about pen trading with people that for some it's confusing because they've either never heard of it or if they've heard about it in some other context, they don't quite understand or get, if you will, what the appeal is or why it would be such a useful tool for gospel conversations during the Olympic Games. And um, I, I, I totally understand that. That would be like me trying to explain, somebody trying to explain to me, um, you know, how they experienced the Grand Canyon. I've never been there. I've heard it's awe-inspiring. I heard it's breathtaking. And no matter how much somebody may try to explain that to me, I may not quite grasp the total concept of it. So I've put up on today's um, screen behind me a picture of me. Yes, that's me. Dark hair, um, much smaller version of me. Uh, from the 2004 Winter Games in Athens, um, Greece. Now, if you're listening to this online um, and you're not watching this, I'd encourage you to go to our website, beyondtherings.net. In fact, if you scroll down on the homepage, you'll see this picture, picture above um, a section that I, ta uh, I call uh, uh, Why Pen Trading. And uh, in this picture, it is myself, um, engaged in a conversation with a, a Mexican um, Olympic athlete. Um, he was a swimmer for Mexico in the summer of 2004 in Athens, Greece. And in this picture, you see me with a lanyard around my neck. Um, and on my lanyard are a few pins. Now, these are pins, uh, I will call them lapel pins, if you're um, not watching um and seeing this image, but they're lapel pins. They're not writing pens. I understand there's several different types of pens. P-E-N, P-I-N. Um, it is a lapel pen. And it is about, it's about, uh, f uh, you know, they can r range in size. The ones that I'm making um, for Paris 24 um, are going to be about two inches by two and a half inches. Um, on my water cup here, again, for those of you who can see online, um, it's it's a little bit smaller than this, um, and if you see the the image in the screen, if you can see that uh, any detail at all, um, you can see that there are various sizes and shapes and styles of pens. So here's the deal: as, as much as I understand it, and I'm not an Olympic pen um, trading expertise by any stretch of the imagination, but here's my understanding. That from the very earliest days of the modern Olympics, 1896, um, athletes and um, Olympic officials would use um, cardboard, sometimes um, a cloth um, identify, uh, identifiers, um, and it would often, you know, indicate. And these were self-made um, to identify what country they're from, what sport they're with, uh, things of that nature. It's my understanding over the years um, that some of the early pens would take on the form of, um, like I said, cardboard. Um, and they discovered, you know, hey, we're at this worldwide event. You got to remember back in the early days of the Olympics, they were, they were crossing the ocean by boat, you know, <laughs> for weeks. Um, and so um, looking for unique uh memorabilia from their experience they uh, discovered hey let's just i don't need my badge anymore you don't need your badge anymore let's trade and so that's kind of my that's my understanding of how uh pen trading olympic pen trading got its origin now you fast forward and there's lots of different articles out there about this but about 1988 um, when the games were i believe in calgary was the first big um pen trading push uh, using the, mo the, the metal um, lapel pins, uh, much like we use today. Very early rudimentary versions of those, but that's essentially what they were. Where pen trading began to really pick up steam and uh, began to um, take off in popularity. Um, so that by the time you get to um, 
Athens in 1996, in uh, Athens, Atlanta in 1996, pen trading um, was a big deal. Um, and the numbers that I see um, going into the 2024 Paris games are, uh, you know, something like, you know, it, it would not be uncommon to have hundreds of different types uh, and um, versions of Olympic pins. And there are some major categories like corporations. If you're an official Olympic um, sponsor, like uh, worldwide is Coca-Cola or has been, I don't know the, the current status of their sponsorship, but it's been like Coca-Cola. It's been um, McDonald's, um, uh, Dow Industries, um, uh, Kodak, believe it or not, um, back in the early days of my Olympic experience, Kodak was a big sponsor, um, and, and on down the line. So they'll have pins. Um, and then you'll have some pins that are unofficially associated uh, with the Olympics. For example, when I was in um, Canada, uh, Vancouver, during the 2010 Olympic Games, the Apple stores uh, in uh, that area had made up lapel pins uh, that were um, basically the uh, mimicking the size uh and um, layout of iPads and um, um, and iPods. And so the idea was um, if you would go to the Apple store, um, each day they would have a different pen. They had four different versions. Um, and it was that, it was either an iPad or an iPhone or an, I, uh, or an Apple Pod. Maybe it was iPhone and, and um, iPad. Um, and... Um, they were red, red and gray or silver, like the apple color. And um, you could get a new pen. And they had four different versions. And they, and it had a, the Canadian, it had a, a maple leaf in the middle. So it was red with a maple leaf in the middle. But it had no Olympic rings. It had, it, it had nothing about Vancouver 2010. Because to use those images, you have to pay the International Olympic Committee a, um, a fee. And Apple, wanting to take advantage of the popularity without paying the additional fee, just made these additional pins that were not official uh, Olympic pins, but they were released uh, for the intention and purpose of the Olympics. You'll have a lot of those kind of um, pins out there. As I said, um, in this encounter with this Mexican swimmer, um, he had a pin uh, as a swimmer for Mexico. Um, it, uh, specifically for his event, uh, his team, uh, the Mexican swim team. Um, and um, so even though the pins we use are gospel pins, we don't trade. Uh, we never want to trade. It's not conditional. I'll give you my Jesus pin if you'll give me a pin. That's not how we use pen trading. We will use pen trading to engage and start the conversation and uh, like in this picture with me, it, virtually um, any pin on my lapel, uh, on my um, lanyard, um, I'm willing to give up because I don't care much about a McDonald's pin um, if I can engage in a conversation with somebody and share the gospel with them. And so I'll try to um, navigate a good trade because I don't want to be seen as a, a fool. But at the same time, that's not my ultimate purpose. I, I want them to get the pin they're interested in. I'll get one of medium interest. Um, occasionally, I'll get some that are really cool. But again, that that's not my ultimate goal. Um, and then I'll say to the person, like I did with this uh, Mexican swimmer, hey, I'll give you a pin if you'll let me tell you the story behind it. So think about that for just a minute. He's told me his story. He's in Athens, he's from Mexico, he's a, an Olympic swimmer. Um, that's kind of his story. Well, my story is I'm um, in Athens, um, I'm a pastor, and I'm there to talk to people about Jesus. So he used his pen to tell me a little bit about himself. I used the gospel pens to tell people about me, and the most important thing to, about me is my relationship with Jesus Christ. And so, um, that's how we use Olympic pins 
uh, for this unique opportunity. And they really do allow us to engage in authentic encounters with others that we can then, by using the pins, bridge and transition that gospel, uh, that conversation to the gospel by focusing on the pen, um, by using the pen to tell the story about what Jesus did for us, and then offering it to them free, no strings attached. They don't have to say a prayer. They don't have to be nice to me. Uh, they could tell me to fly, uh, take a flying leap after I share the gospel with them. It's still theirs if, it, if they're willing to take it. And again, that's another illustration is I can hold the pen in my hand and I can tell them about the gospel. I can tell them how Jesus died uh, to pay the price for their sin. But until the moment they receive this gift, it isn't theirs. And the same is true for us that we may know about Jesus. We may be able to tell stories that we've heard from grandma or mom and dad or um, in churches when we grew up. But until we receive the gift of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ for ourselves, it's not ours. And so, um, it's amazing to me how God would take such a simple piece of, of metal um, to uh, help break down resistance, help um, remove barriers um, for the, the sake of the gospel. Now, here's what you have to understand, and I've talked about this before on a previous episode, but just uh, to re reiterate, my friend and mentor, David Quinn of International Sports Chaplains and Action Ministries Internationals before that, um, he had a phrase. He said, uh, we want to be uh, uh, personal evangelism with the highest integrity. And so what that integrity means to me and to Dave, as he taught me, and as I've experienced all these years at the Olympics, is if I'm not really interested in this person, then I shouldn't stop to talk to him. Um, I rem I'm reminded of, uh, you know, any number of accounts. Uh, one that comes to my mind, I don't think I've shared yet, is um, when I was again in Canada, walking down the street, headed back to where we were staying, and there was a young woman on the sidewalk um, offering to read, um, do a reading uh, for people with tarot cards, tarot cards. And um, so me and uh, the guy I was with, we just kind of waited around politely until she was done with the person she was talking with and they moved on. And then we, we, we just approached her and we sat down and we started talking with her about how, no, we didn't want a reading. Um, we were just interested in her story and how she got there, come to find out she's American. She'd hitchhiked up to Canada to be there during the games. And we transitioned using the pen to the gospel. And um, we were able to share the gospel with her. And she recounted how she had grown up in the church, going with her, I think her grandma, and um, how once she got into her teen years, she really rebelled and um, has pretty much been on her own since she was a young teen. And uh, just the, the poor choices she had made and, and how that resulted in her ending up where she was now. And um, we never once spoke about her use of the tarot cards. We never once, you know, got in her grill about, you know, um, playing with um, other spirits. Both are legitimate concerns for sure. We were seeking to engage in an authentic, genuine encounter so that we could win the right to share the gospel with her and to demonstrate with her the gospel that we wanted her to know that God loves her, that Jesus um, loves her, and his forgiveness is available to all of us whenever we're ready and willing um, to come back and um, to repent and to return, whether for the first time and enter into our relationship with, with Christ or for the hundredth time if, as after we've fallen um, and struggling with a particular sin, Jesus is always there ready to catch us and um, forgive us and uh, resume um, his intimate relationship with us. And so, um, go to beyondtherings.net. You can see more stories about pen trading. Uh, there's a tab there on that main homepage that you can go and you can see uh, the, the physical pen displays that I have put together um, that show the many of the pens I've collected over the last uh, 10 Olympics. Um, and you can get a better sense of um, what Olympic pen trading is about. And again... As you hear about the Olympics, um, as you see more stories, 
as you hear about Paris and the way the International Olympic Committee and the uh, Paris Olymp Olympic Committee are preparing for the Games in July, pray. Pray every single time uh, for the gospel uh, to be free and unrestricted, um, uh, that uh, for Beyond the Rings, people like me and those who are joining me, um, and many other ministries that will be there, churches and international ministries that will be there, again, trying to do um, what God has called me and Beyond the Rings to do, and that is to be at the Olympics in the host cities, sharing the, the love of Jesus Christ using Olympic pen trading. God is so cool and God is so great because he'll use anybody and anything um, to point people back to him and to draw men and women, boys and girls to himself. So thank you for listening uh, today uh, for this episode of Beyond the Rings Short Stories. Again, um, we are in the, um, the heat of raising money for the Paris 2024 Outreach. And currently, uh, we're into the phase of pen production. And so if you would like to help produce gospel pens to be used in Paris 2024, they cost about $3 a piece. And our, our vision, our goal is to produce 3,000 of them. So we need $9,000 to make uh, the Jesus pens. Uh, not the Jesus pens, uh, the BTR pens. The Jesus pens are the tool my friends um, Dave Gwynn and uh, international sports chaplains use, and it's a great tool. But we are making a pen, uh, the Jesus, uh, the um, Beyond the Rings pen, and we're using a slightly different gospel tool, the three circles, instead of the uh, wordless gospel. And um, like I said, uh, $3 a pen. So if you donate $100, um, you'll help make 33 pens that can be used in 33 gospel conversations this summer. Go to the beyondtherings.net. There's a give tab there. You can give online. You can send a check. All the details are there. And I'm confident we're going to be using many, many pens this summer to have many, many gospel conversations. And because of that, uh, men and women, boys and girls are going to come to faith to Christ both this summer and in the future because of the seeds that will be planted. Thank you again for being with me today. I'll see you next time. God bless.